Foster parent takes an abandoned child, the heartwarming way the child repays her later. It was a cold, dreary afternoon in late November when Alexander Thompson's life changed forever. The grey clouds hung low in the sky, casting a sombre mood over the small town of Brooksville. The wind whipped through the bare trees, sending leaves skittering across the pavement like lost memories. Alexander was on her way home from the grocery store, her mind occupied with the month's Samuel E. tasks of the day. She was a woman in her late fifties, with short silver hair and a kind face that had seen its share of hardship. She lived alone in a modest house on the outskirts of town, her days filled with volunteer work and tending to her garden. Life was quiet for Alexander, and she had grown accustomed to the solitude that came with it. As she turned the corner onto Maple Street, something caught her eye. A small figure huddled on the steps of an abandoned building. The sight stopped Alexander in her tracks. At first, she thought it was a stray dog, but as she looked closer, she realized it was a child. A little girl, no older than seven or eight, with dark, tangled hair and a face streaked with dirt. Alexander's heart etched at the sight. She approached the child cautiously, her voice soft and gentle. Hello, sweetheart. Are you okay? The girl looked up, her wide, frightened eyes meeting Alexander. Yes, she didn't speak, but the fear in her gaze was unmistakable. Alexander knelt down beside her, instinctively reaching out to touch the girl's shoulder. My name is Alexander, she said soothingly. You don't have to be afraid. I'm here to help. The girl flinched at the touch, but she didn't pull away. Alexander could see that she was shivering, her thin clothes no match for the biting cold. Without hesitation, Alexander took off her own coat and draped it over the girl's shoulders, trying to offer some warmth. Where are your parents? Alexander asked, her heart sinking as she noticed the girl's bare feet and the bruises on her arms. The girl shook her head, her lips trembling as she finally spoke. I, I don't know. It was clear to Alexander that the child was alone, abandoned and terrified. She couldn't leave her there, not in this condition. Alexander's protective instincts kicked in, and she knew she had to do something. Come with me, Alexander said gently, holding up her hand. I'll take care of you. The girl hesitated for a moment, her eyes searching Alexander's face as if trying to decide whether or not to trust her. Finally, she placed her small, cold hand in Alexander's, and the two of them walked together towards Alexander's home. As they walked, Alexander's mind raced with questions. Who was this child? Where had she come from? And why was she all alone in the world? But for now, those questions would have to wait. The important thing was getting the girl to a safe, warm place. Alexander's house was warm and inviting, a stark contrast to the cold, desolate streets outside. She led the girl inside, where the smell of freshly baked bread filled the air. Alexander had always found comfort in baking, and today was no different. It was her way of bringing warmth and love into her home, even when she was alone. Let's get you cleaned up, sweetheart, Alexander said as she guided the girl to the bathroom. You can take a warm bath, and I'll find you some clean clothes. The girl didn't resist as Alexander helped her into the tub, the warm water washing away the dirt and grime. Alexander couldn't help but notice the bruises on the girl's arms and legs, signs of a life that had been anything but easy. Her heart etched for the child, and she resolved to do whatever it took to protect her. After the bath, Alexander dressed the girl in a soft, oversized sweater and a pair of leggings that she had found in the back of her closet. They were much too big, but they would have to do for now. What's your name, darling? Alexander asked as she gently brushed the girl's hair, trying to bring some order to the tangled mess. The girl hesitated, her eyes downcast. Kirsten, she whispered. That's a beautiful name, Alexander said with a smile. Kirsten, I'm going to take care of you, okay? You don't have to worry about anything. Kirsten nodded, but she didn't say anything else. Alexander could see that the girl was still scared, still unsure of her new surroundings. But there was a spark of trust in her eyes, a glimmer of hope that Alexander clung to. That night, Alexander made Kirsten a simple meal, chicken soup and bread with butter. Kirsten ate slowly, her eyes darting around the room as if she were afraid someone might take the food away. Alexander watched her with a mixture of sadness and determination. She didn't know where Kirsten had come from or what she had been through, but she knew one thing. This child needed love, 
stability, and a safe place to call home. As the days turned into weeks, Alexander and Kirsten settled into a routine. Alexander took Kirsten shopping for clothes and toys, making sure she had everything she needed. She enrolled her in school, where Kirsten slowly began to make friends and catch up on the education she had missed. But despite the progress Kirsten was making, there was still a mystery that weighed heavily in Alexander's mind. Where had Kirsten come from? Why had she been abandoned? And who had hurt her? Alexander had tried asking Kirsten about her past, but the girl would always shut down, refusing to talk about it. Alexander didn't want to push too hard, knowing that Kirsten needed time to heal. But the questions lingered, and Alexander couldn't help but feel that there was more to Kirsten's story than she was letting on. As the weeks passed, Alexander noticed that Kirsten had a tendency to become anxious whenever they left the house. She would cling to Alexander's hand, her eyes darting nervously around as if she were expecting something, or someone to appear at any moment. It was clear that Kirsten was still haunted by whatever had happened to her before Alexander found her. One afternoon, after picking Kirsten up from school, Alexander decided to take a different route home. They passed by the town's main square, where a group of people had gathered for a local farmer's market. As they walked through the square, Alexander felt Kirsten's grip tighten on her hand. What's wrong, sweetheart? Alexander asked, noticing the fear in Kirsten's eyes. Kirsten didn't answer, but she kept looking over her shoulder, her expression one of growing panic. Alexander followed her gaze, but she couldn't see anything unusual, just the usual hustle and bustle of the market. Do you see someone you know? Alexander asked gently, trying to understand what was causing Kirsten's distress. Kirsten shook her head, her voice barely a whisper. No, I just, I don't like it here. Alexander frowned, her concern growing. We can go home if you want. You're safe with me, Kirsten. No one's going to hurt you. Kirsten nodded, but she didn't relax until they were back in the car, heading home. Alexander couldn't shake the feeling that there was something, or someone, that Kirsten was afraid of. But without more information, there was little she could do to protect her. That evening, after Kirsten had gone to bed, Alexander sat down at the kitchen table and opened her laptop. She had been reluctant to pry into Kirsten's past, but now she felt she had no choice. She needed to know what had happened to this child, and she needed to know if there was anyone out there who might be looking for her. Alexander started by searching the local news archives, looking for any reports of missing children that matched Kirsten's description. It was a long shot, but it was all she had to go on. Hours passed as she come through article after article, but nothing seemed to fit. Just as she was about to give up for the night, Alexander stumbled across a report from a neighboring town. It was a story about a man who had been arrested for child abuse and neglect. The article mentioned that the man's daughter had been taken into protective custody, but the details were vague. There was no name, no photo, just a brief mention of the case. Alexander's heart raced as she read the article. Could this be connected to Kirsten? Was it possible that she had been taken from an abusive home and somehow ended up in Brooksville? She printed out the article and placed it in a folder with the other information she had gathered. She would take it to the local authorities the next day and see if they could help her piece together the puzzle. But as she closed her laptop and got ready for bed, Alexander couldn't shake the feeling that she was getting closer to the truth and that the truth might be more than she was prepared to handle. The next morning, Alexander took the folder of information to the local police station. She explained the situation to Officer Samuel Ramirez, a kind man in his early 40s who had known Alexander for years. Alexander, I know you're concerned about Kirsten, and I want to help, Officer Ramirez said as he looked through the papers he had brought. But without more concrete evidence, it's hard to say if this report is connected to her. Alexander sighed, feeling a sense of frustration. I understand, Samuel, but I can't shake the feeling that something isn't right. Kirsten is so afraid, and the bruises, the way she was when I found her, it all points to something terrible. Officer Ramirez nodded thoughtfully. I'll look into it, Alexander. I'll reach out to the authorities in the neighboring town and see if they have any information that might help us. In the meantime, keep doing what you're doing, providing Kirsten with a safe and loving home. That's the most important thing right now. Alexander thanked him and left the station, her mind still racing with questions. She knew that the road to uncovering the truth wouldn't be easy, but she was determined to do whatever it took to protect Kirsten. Over the next few days, 
Alexander continued to care for Kirsten, doing her best to make the child feel safe and loved. But she couldn't stop thinking about the report she had found and the possibility that someone might be looking for Kirsten. One evening, as they were sitting on the couch together watching a movie, Alexander noticed that Kirsten seemed distracted. She kept glancing out the window, her expression tense. What's on your mind, sweetheart? Alexander asked, pausing the movie. Kirsten hesitated, her small hands fidgeting nervously in her lap. Alexander, do you think he'll find me? Alexander's heart skipped a beat. Who, Kirsten? Who are you afraid of? Kirsten looked down, her voice barely above a whisper. My dad, he was always angry. He hurt me. And then one day, I ran away. I didn't know where to go. So I just kept walking until I couldn't walk anymore. That's when you found me. Alexander felt a surge of protectiveness as she wrapped her arms around Kirsten. Oh, sweetheart, I'm so sorry. You're safe now, okay? No one is going to hurt you ever again. I promise. Kirsten buried her face in Alexander's shoulder, and for the first time, she began to cry. It was as if all the fear and pain she had been holding inside finally came pouring out. Alexander held her tightly, her own tears falling as she comforted the child who had come to mean so much to her. As they sat together on the couch, Alexander knew that she had to find a way to keep Kirsten safe from her past. But she also knew that they couldn't live in fear forever. Kirsten deserved to have a future freed from the shadows of her past, and Alexander was determined to make that happen. The next morning, Alexander received a call from Officer Ramirez. He had managed to get in touch with the authorities in the neighboring town, and they had confirmed that the man mentioned in the report was indeed Kirsten's father. He had been arrested for child abuse and neglect, but he had escaped from custody before his trial. There had been no sign of him since, and the authorities were concerned that he might be looking for Kirsten. Alexander's heart sank at the news. The thought of Kirsten's father finding her and taking her away was unbearable. She knew she had to act quickly to ensure Kirsten's safety. Officer Ramirez assured Alexander that the police would increase patrols around her neighborhood and keep an eye out for any suspicious activity. He also suggested that Alexander file for legal guardianship of Kirsten, which would provide an extra layer of protection and ensure that Kirsten's father couldn't take her away without a court order. Alexander agreed, and with the help of a lawyer, she began the process of becoming Kirsten's legal guardian. It was a complicated and time-consuming process, but Alexander was determined to see it through. Kirsten had become a part of her life, a part of her heart, and she couldn't bear the thought of losing her. As the weeks passed, Alexander and Kirsten continued to grow closer. Kirsten began to open up more about her past, sharing bits and pieces of her life before she met Alexander. It was clear that she had been through a lot of pain and trauma, but with Alexander's love and support, she was slowly beginning to heal. One day, as they were walking through the park, Kirsten stopped suddenly and looked up at Alexander with a serious expression. Alexander, can I ask you something? Kirsten said, her voice hesitant. Of course, sweetheart. You can ask me anything, Alexander replied, kneeling down to be at eye level with Kirsten. Do you think, do you think I could call you mom? Kirsten asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Alexander's heart swelled with emotion, and she felt tears welling up in her eyes. Oh, Kirsten, I would be ominous if you call me mom, she said, her voice choked with emotion. Kirsten smiled, and for the first time, Alexander saw a light in her eyes that hadn't been there before. It was a moment of pure, unfiltered joy, and Alexander knew that they were on the right path. The day finally came when Alexander was granted legal guardianship of Kirsten. It was a day filled with mixed emotions, relief, joy, and a lingering sense of fear that Kirsten's father might still be out there, looking for her. But Alexander refused to let that fear overshadow the happiness of the moment. As they left the courthouse, hand in hand, Alexander couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. She had fought hard for this, for the right to protect and care for Kirsten, and now it was official. Kirsten was hers, and nothing could take her away. They celebrated with ice cream at Kirsten's favorite shop, and for the first time in a long time, Alexander allowed herself to relax and enjoy the moment. She watched as Kirsten laughed and smiled, her eyes bright with happiness. It was a sight that warmed Alexander's heart and made all the struggles worth it. But just as they were about to leave the ice cream shop, something unexpected happened. A man walked in, 
his face partially obscured by a baseball cap. Alexander's heart skipped a beat as she recognized him. It was Kirsten's father. He spotted them immediately, his eyes narrowing as he took in the sight of Kirsten sitting happily beside Alexander. Without a word, he started towards them, his expression menacing. Alexander's heart raced as she quickly stood up, placing herself between Kirsten and the man. What do you want? She demanded, her voice steady despite the fear gnawing at her insides. The man stopped, his eyes locked on Kirsten. She's my daughter. I'm here to take her back. No, you're not, Alexander said firmly. You lost that right the moment you hurt her. Kirsten is mine now, and I won't let you take her. The man's face twisted with anger, and for a moment, Alexander thought he might try to force his way past her. But then something unexpected happened. Kirsten stepped forward, her small frame trembling but her voice strong. I'm not going anywhere with you, Kirsten said, her eyes filled with determination. Alexander is my mom now, and I want to stay with her. You can't hurt me anymore. The man hesitated, his expression faltering as he looked at Kirsten. It was clear that he hadn't expected her to stand up to him, and for a moment he seemed unsure of what to do. But before he could make a move, the door of the ice cream shop opened, and Officer Ramirez walked in, flanked by two other officers. They had been keeping an eye on Alexander and Kirsten ever since the court hearing, and they had been alerted to the man's presence by a concerned bystander. The man was quickly taken into custody, and as he was led away in handcuffs, Alexander felt a wave of relief wash over her. It was over. Kirsten was safe. In the days that followed, Alexander and Kirsten began to settle into their new life together. The fear that had once overshadowed their days was gone, replaced by a sense of peace and security that neither of them had felt in a long time. Kirsten continued to thrive under Alexander's care, her confidence growing with each passing day. She made new friends, excelled in school, and found joy in the little things, like baking cookies with Alexander, playing in the park, and reading bedtime stories together. But the most heartwarming moment came one evening as Alexander and Kirsten were sitting on the porch, watching the sunset. Kirsten turned to Alexander, her eyes shining with love and gratitude. Mom, Kirsten said softly, I'm so happy you found me. I don't know what I would have done without you. Alexander smiled, her heart swelling with emotion. I'm the lucky one, Kirsten. You've brought so much joy into my life and I'm so proud to be your mom. Kirsten hesitated for a moment, then reached into her pocket and pulled out a small worn piece of paper. She handed it to Alexander, her voice trembling with emotion. I made this for you. It's not much, but it's a thank you for everything you've done for me. Alexander unfolded the paper and felt her breath catch in her throat. It was a drawing, a simple childlike depiction of Alexander and Kirsten standing together, hand in hand with a bright sun shining above them. Below the drawing were the words written in Kirsten's careful handwriting. Thank you for being my mom. Tears filled Alexander's eyes as she looked at the drawing, her heart overflowing with love. She pulled Kirsten into a tight embrace, holding her close as she whispered, I love you, Kirsten, more than anything in the world. I love you too, mom, Kirsten whispered back, her voice filled with warmth and sincerity. As they sat together on the porch, the sun dipping below the horizon, Alexander knew that their journey had only just begun. They had faced challenges, uncovered painful truths, and overcome obstacles that had once seemed insurmountable. But through it all, they have found something precious, love, trust, and the unbreakable bond between a mother and her child. And in that moment, Alexander knew that she had found her purpose. She had taken in an abandoned child, given her a home, and in return, she had received the greatest gift of all, a family.